If you've watched our latest video, then you know that we just got back from an amazing trip to Peru. In 2019, we traveled six continents and 23 countries. Mm -hmm. As you might imagine, we've gotten pretty good at planning travel, choosing destinations, and packing. We're giving you all the tea in our latest ebook, The Ultimate Travel Handbook. Click on the link in the description to get your copy now. In this video, we're reviewing the Exotica Travel Company <laughs> and sharing our tips for traveling Peru. What's up, Legacy Builders? I'm Rob. I'm Rishon. And, and this, this is Learn, Learn Hustle Grow. She's a stock trader. He's a realtor. And we are debt-free investors. If you've been following our journey, then you know that in 2018, we left our W-2 jobs and in 2019, we traveled the world. We focused on debt pay down and long-term investing in both real estate and the stock market to achieve financial independence. On this channel, you'll find videos on the topics of money, real estate, and investing. Occasionally, we share our travel experiences. Exotica provides travel packages for destinations all around the world. Locations include South America, Central America, Africa, Asia, Europe, Oceania, Oceania. Mm. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce that. Anyway, if you've used Exotica Travel, comment below. Tell us about your experience. So we've planned DIY travel and we've done packages, but we uh, have decided that we love the package type of travel. Yeah, there's nothing like having an itinerary all mapped out for you. Listen, while nobody complains about taking a vacation, planning a trip can be a lot of work. Depending on the company you choose, you get to hand that work off to someone else. And we used Exotica Travel for the first time during our trip to Peru. Mm -hmm. We were really excited to find a company that included international flights. Yeah. With other companies, we booked our own international flights. The problem came in when we got booked on a return flight that was a red eye. Mm, 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 return flight that was a red eye. Yes. <laughs> Guys, we know that red eye flights are an opportunity to save money, yeah. but honestly, we have managed to avoid them during most of our travel. We just don't like it. Mm -mm. Okay, we boarded a flight leaving Peru at midnight mm. to get to Miami the next morning coming back. Guys, it was almost noon by the time we landed in DFW. We were absolutely exhausted. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that our flights were so close. Once we came through customs, we had to get straight to the gate. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have time to get food in Miami, which is one of the things we honestly look forward to. Yes. Yeah. Because we have priority pass right. as part of our Chase like Sapphire card. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And we normally stop at the restaurant in Terminal D <laughs> so that we can enjoy some kind of meal. Mm -hmm but we didn't have that opportunity that was taken from us. So, you know, the good thing could be that they booked the flights close together and we were able to get straight home. Mm -hmm. However, if we have a layover, we want to take full advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what about you guys? What do you think? What could we have done differently? Well, we could have checked the flights way before we flew out uh, to leave to go to Peru, but we missed that. And I'll accept full responsibility for that. The reason we didn't do it was because I was very focused on planning my birthday party here in Dallas. <laughs> two, what, two days before? And I just really wanted that to go well, and yeah. I, was I, was, I was completely distracted. So yeah. I, I will take the responsibility for that. Perhaps it could have been fixed if we had caught it sooner. Mm. Exotica requires that your package is fully paid for 60 days before travel. And just a heads up, your flight details are not available until mm. 30 days before the Hard, trip. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> they claim that that's due to the airline. Mm. Rather than provide you with flights sooner that might keep changing, they wait until 30 days before so that you know, you know that those flights are locked in. Just in case you're wondering, the total travel time from Dallas to Peru was about seven hours and 12 minutes. So that's a total duration. That yeah. doesn't include the time spent in uh, in the airport, right? Yeah. For an international flight, you want to arrive two hours early to make sure you get through security. Mm. Then you have the layover uh, in between. And our flights actually got delayed, babe. You remember yeah, that? Yeah, a long time because it was raining and even though it hadn't rained in 
you know, weeks and weeks, but that day. Yes. You know, all you gotta do is try to travel and it'll rain. Yes, we actually <laughs> flew out during the downpour mm. that was the first day of many days of rain yeah. here in DFW. Crazy. We were in Peru during dry season. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about hotels. So there are three categories for hotels when you're traveling to Peru with Exotica. And those categories were charm, superior and luxury yes now we knew this was a very active trip and <laughs> charm was the level that was actually included in the base package mm, mm, mm. we didn't expect to spend that much time in the room so we decided that based on the description charm would be fine okay so hotels at this level are des described as comfortable mm -hmm. and they also claim on their website that hey these are four-star hotels on TripAdvisor. We should have looked at TripAdvisor too. You know, right, check we it out. should have. Yeah. But we didn't bother to check it because who would advertise something like this if it wasn't true? Right. Because it can be verified. It should be called basic, y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> Guys, we traveled for a full year and most of that time we stayed in three-star hotels. Yep. Those three-star three hotels were way more comfortable yeah. than the hotels at the charm yeah. level. Let's talk about it just a little bit. Mm. Now, we want to support the local businesses and we understand that by staying at these smaller hotels versus big chains that we are supporting the economy. Right. However, the beds. Ooh, baby. we box springs. It mm. felt like box spring on box springs. Mm. Y'all <laughs> talk about uncomfortable. <laughs> Woo, it was rough sleeping. Yeah. And yeah. for that and and yeah. because of that, we were tired most yeah. of the time we're already the next from home. day. Yeah. yeah. We are already from home and it's hard, it's hard for you to sleep unless you just can sleep anywhere. Yeah. It's already hard to sleep from home and yeah. then on top of that sleeping on a box spring like mattress yes yeah, so you, you are know. suffering from jet lag you are in an uncomfortable unfamiliar bed yeah so ladies i'm going to throw this tip in right here take makeup on your trip if you plan to do photos and video just because you feel tired, there's no reason to look tired. <laughs> I personally find that because we do these YouTube videos, I need to take that extra step and pack the makeup. Mm. So there were four hotels included into, in our Peru package over the course of the 11 days. Also know that um, we went during their winter mm -hmm. and their winter is from June to October. So while we were there, we experienced temperatures from 30 degrees to 70 degrees mm. daily. Essentially, we went to bed cold and woke up cold. Mm -hmm. Have you guys taken a trip to Peru? If so, when were you there? Comment below. Only one of the four hotels that we visited had heat mm. at all, y'all. Mm -hmm. And in that one hotel, people said, that their heaters didn't work. So there were still people that had no heat at all, even though we had heat in that hotel, technically. Yeah, and it was a wall-based heater, so yes, they don't do central yeah. heat and air. Yeah. And I guess it's probably not necessarily based on their weather. Right. However, we've seen weather changing all over the world, right? right? Here in Texas, we are evidence of the fact that the weather and the climate is changing. So perhaps they're going through that as well in Peru. Mm. Because if you Google the weather in Peru, during these months, they actually state that the weather doesn't, that, that the temperatures don't drop below 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not true. <laughs> we took a screenshot of the weather while we were there on uh, my phone, and maybe we'll share that with you guys. Yeah. But anywho, the fact that the rooms were cold was not a problem for Rob. He no. honestly likes to sleep cold <sighs> at night, and some of you might be the same. However, I am a cold-natured person. Mm -hmm. I am always cold and might have been miserable if my husband didn't give off so much wonderful heat. Okay, so we also found out that the Charm uh, Hotel selection, uh, they are not close to the city centers, mm -hmm. right? Um, we prefer being closer to the city center and that way we can usually walk where we wanna go and hang out. And they kinda, our hotels are kinda out of the way a little bit. You had to yeah, get at least two of the four required transportation for us to get to restaurants yes. and to be able to explore outside of our tour company mm -hmm. and that group and the group we were with. Uber does work there, so you know yeah. it's fairly inexpensive. And if you don't mind jumping in an Uber, it wasn't that big of an inconvenience. Right. And most nights we were ex 
exhausted. We were really tired <laughs> after yeah. everything was said Busy and done. Yeah. So um, just a tip, if you want those hotels that are at a little higher level mm -hmm. and in the prime locations, the best thing to do would be to upgrade to a minimum of a superior hotel experience mm -hmm. when booking with Exotica. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's what we would do if we decided we were going to yeah. try that company again. Yeah. Some people might not care though, is what I was thinking, right? Yeah. If you don't care, but you know, for those who do, we, we just want to give you the information. So, so our biggest issues were hotels and flight times. As far as everything else, like uh, WhatsApp support was great. The tour, you know, like the um, local tours were great and the tour guides were great, so. Yeah, he mentioned WhatsApp support because for some <clears throat> reason the toll-free number, which is supposed to be 24 hours uh. <laughs> on their website does not work. Mm. However, there was a number that worked. We used it via WhatsApp and yeah. we didn't have any problems reaching Exotica if we had any issues or concerns. Yeah. Also, whenever our flights landed and we took international flights as well as domestic flights in country, the local team was always there to pick us up. Yes. And that is something you really appreciate when yeah. you are traveling in a foreign country and you are moving around yeah. from what they call district to district. I think yeah, we would yeah. call them states. Yeah, yeah. You want somebody local to be there for you. Yeah. Hardly any waiting. So it makes you feel nice and safe in there. You're, you know, they got the sign and they're ready to go. So we appreciate that. So yeah. what would you say that the, the place rated like one to ten? If we were going to give them a rating from 1 to 10, I'm thinking Exotica would be, not the place, right, not Peru, but Exotica Travel Company and their services, mm. I think I would rate them a 7 on a scale from 1 to 10. Okay. Does that sound okay. reasonable to you? I, I, I liked them. I, I would have to say like somewhere between like a 7 and 8 because okay. it, it wasn't the total top notch, but I think that's what they're kind of going for, right? Right. Uh, right. I don't know. think I didn't mind the hotels because I was, you know, like I said, you were hot. Your hot nature, cold, and all that type of stuff. Yeah, the beds. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> I don't know. And I, but I was in the military. I don't know. Stuff don't bother me as much certain times, yeah. but but I would I would have liked a little bit more luxury. Yeah. So I do think that they're giving you the charm level to give you a reason to upgrade. <laughs> hey. I just think they should be more clear about that in their get? marketing and yeah, yeah. description. Yeah, what are you gonna get? Charm should be called basic. I don't think we would have booked it if it was called basic. You, you can't, you can't and that say way that. we could have just, you know, <laughs> moved on up before Who, we got there. Who's gonna call this stuff basic though? Nobody wanna nobody wanna be basic, right? Mm. <laughs> This trip overall, though, was a great adventure to mm -hmm. us. We love new countries. We love new places. We love just, you know, uh, checking out the world wonders and all that. So we saw Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. the big the big sites. Machu Picchu, uh, the Sacred Valley, Lake Titicaca. Man, it was, it was amazing. Um, the, now, keep in mind yeah. that these amazing sites require quite a bit of walking Ooh, and yes. climbing of stairs. Yeah, buddy. So if you are out of shape, not physically fit, you yeah. don't walk on a regular basis, <laughs> this can be hard yeah. on yeah. your body. Yeah. You're going gonna to lose a couple pounds doing this. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rob and I are both in decent shape. We make it a point to exercise, you know, five days a week whenever possible. So we didn't experience any soreness regarding our bodies. No. But there was no way to escape the, the altitude. altitude. Oh, my God. Yeah. Should we talk about that? Uh, so, <laughs> the I got altitude sickness. Did not see that coming. Mm. Um, for I don't know. I don't know much about altitude, but from what I understand, DFW is like 500 altitude. This place was 8,000 on average, right? Mm. <laughs> right. And when he, said, when he says this place, he means once we get to Cusco, yeah, right? Yeah. Lima is at sea level. Okay. So when we landed in the big city, which is where you land for your international yeah. flight. There weren't any issues, yeah. um, but they Slightly. actually prepared us yeah, before yeah. we got on the bus to head out to Cusco Oof. to let us know that there would be challenges. What yeah. are some of the things they, they gave us a heads up on, babe? Do you remember? Uh, you mean like the candy and stuff they gave us? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so they gave us like, the, they, they, were, they were talking about this tea. I forgot what it was called. Um, uh, coca, coca leaf coca, tea. Yeah, coca leaf tea. Um, they, they, they say you should constantly be pounding that. They gave candies. I tried the candies. I don't, I don't know if they worked though, man. Yeah. So some people actually had a prescription for altitude medicine, yeah. 
And you could also buy an over-the-counter altitude medication oh. at their pharmacies, yeah. which we did do. Yeah. And that is an all-natural supplement. Right. And I, um, yeah, I was gonna say I got I had constant headaches. Yeah. And it's funny, I'm a I'm the kind of person I never have headaches, which was odd because. I had more headaches in that one week than I've had in like five years, y'all. Yeah. So, and uh, none of the natural remedies worked for him. Nothing. So we did have Tylenol and sinus medication with us, yeah. and we, uh, and and he took all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and still struggled. So yeah. perhaps if you if this is something you you're concerned about the altitude sickness. Ask your primary care physician for yeah, a prescription, prescription. Yes, and that way you you might have a better experience. Yeah. We share a lot of other tips regarding the full medicine cabinet that we carry with us when we travel in the Ultimate Travel Handbook. So mm -hmm. don't forget to clink, uh, click the link in the description below so that you can get your copy and make sure you spread the word. Just know that hydration is crucial. Mm. Honestly, I could not drink enough water still. Um, I probably should drink more than I did, but. Um, You're worried about going to the bathroom constantly yes, as well. Yes, yes. Right. yeah. So you, you need to bring your own uh, reusable bottle because they may or may not have water and they're constantly selling it. Don't get, right. hey, you, don't get that twisted. You'll always be have some water to buy, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I mean, you better have a lot of dollars cause, yeah. uh, yeah, but bring your own water bottle. Now I did everything I could to stay hydrated yeah. and I'm going to keep it 100. I've got after baby bladder 27 years. Mm later and i stayed in the bathroom yes, but the fact did. of the matter is i did not get sick so maybe i was a little more hydrated that was for than the my best. husband that was for the best. so right normally I, I am sicker right than he is right and i recover from things way quicker than she does mm -hmm. oh what i was gonna say though once i got back to lima i was all good yeah. lima was a little lower alter altitude and I was I was back on top. I was like, oh wow. Right. And so we had one more day there. So now what the higher altitude did for me was it made me hungry. Mm. Um, yeah. It amped up my appetite. <laughs> it was weird. Uh, after breakfast, I was immediately ready for lunch, and so on and so on. Yes. So uh, <laughs> she'd be finishing lunch, and then we walk a block, and she'd be like, "You know what? Let's get some ice cream." And the snack. food was good. This oh, is a perfect did we mention opportunity that? for us to tell you Ooh. guys that the food in Peru Listen. was delicious. There are some lot. There's a lot of places out there. I won't mention no names right now. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But anyway, they don't have fantastic food. But Peru got the bomb seasoning. Yes, okay. they understand spices. Yes, they grow their own um, fruits you know, herbs and vegetables. And stuff and, uh, yeah, everything's so natural. We have freshly squeezed juices every oh my, morning at our every, hotels. I mean, very fresh. I mean, yes. Listen, y'all. They, they squeeze it right in front of you, yes, basically. Yes. Their, their soil is so good. I, told, I was just telling my friend at the gym this morning. Soil is so good that there's, there's trees of all kinds of fruit, all just mm -hmm. random places. I saw an orange tree on the side, side of the road, look like grapefruits, mm -hmm. and they just fall on the ground because it's just so such good soil and so, yeah. such good trees growing. And right. you know, obviously, freshly squeezed juices are such a big part of their culture. You yeah. can get them anywhere. In, all of the, the restaurants street. we went to, as well yep. as street vendors, mm -hmm. would just have a juicer and would go to town. Even in the lounge before we left the airport. There was an automated, freshly squeezed juicer. juicer. You could see the oranges just being dumped in the top and the machine rotating oh, oh, and squeezing are, it out. Yeah. Are you going to mention how you felt when you got home after eating? Uh, <laughs> so I ate a lot and I did enjoy it. But once I got home, I felt like I could not eat another thing. Right. I honestly fasted. I went into a fast immediately just to kind of cleanse my body from eating so right. much. But I was talking about the, the, the food was so healthy there, right? Oh, now. Yes. Okay. There is a definite, a definite difference in the way they grow and prepare their food yes. versus the way we grow our food here in the States. Yeah. Um, I have um, some digestive challenges right. and I can tell immediately when my body has had something that I should not have. Yes. And I was not experiencing any problems with the food in Peru. At all. And we had a variety of different meats. Yep. And here, as soon as I... <laughs> A ground turkey. Ground turkey. I don't eat a lot of red meat here, right. and if I do, it has to be really high quality red meat. But I had ground turkey, mm -hmm. from turkey sausages that I made at home, or spaghetti, whatever it was. Yep, spaghetti, yeah. And immediately I felt it in my stomach. Yep. 
Stomach we problems. are doing something to our food here it's crazy. that they just aren't doing in other countries. Yep. I hate to say it, but yeah, yeah. She, it was like weeks. She was good to go, and all of a sudden she comes home. Oh, yeah. It's like, that stinks. So. so you will enjoy the food if you go. Mm. Uh, let's do uh, one more tip or at least a reminder, a heads up for those of you who might be going to Machu Picchu. Mm. In Machu Picchu, they do not allow umbrellas. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am a traveler who uses an umbrella for both sun and rain. Yeah. It provides you with the perfect amount of shade. And throughout our travels, if you watch any of our other videos, you'll note that I am carrying one in some of the hottest temperatures. Right. But that prevented me from getting sunburn. Right. So on this trip, you want to make sure you have sunscreen hat. and a big hat. Big hat. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Rob had a great big hat that he purchased before we left, and he got another one while yeah. we were there. It was it was cold and gloomy when we first sought out, when we first left for the day, right? But by the time we got to Machu Picchu, the sun had came out. Mm -hmm. It was like around that 70 degrees. But just standing there, even if it's 70 degrees, the sun kind of beams on you, you know? Mm -hmm. And they were selling hats along the way up course so you should already have it in your bag or something so when the time you know when the weather changes you you just pull it out you already be prepared instead of getting sold to right so now if you're the type <laughs> of person who likes to buy and shop when you're traveling yeah the exchange rate in Ooh, peru yeah. by comparison to the u.s dollar is amazing yes a quarter of the dollar yeah so so four times our dollar is worth four yeah. times their, their money. Peruvian money. Yeah, so it was easy eats. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Money. So you're even though you're spending, you know, the the money, you're not spending a lot and you no. see the conversion on your yeah. credit card afterwards yeah. and you're just amazed at how right. little you spent for how much you got. The food portions were fairly large, as well as you could really stack up on souvenirs if you yeah. if that's your thing. If you got room in your bag too, right? Yeah. <laughs> but back to the sun, everybody needs sunscreen. All people yeah. burn in the sun. Got that right. Now, I'm I don't peeling. usually burn, but yes, Rob. Who would have known? I'll, Rob <laughs> has burned multiple times. And during our visit to Machu Picchu, he had his sleeves up. Oh, yeah. 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 I wear long sleeves, so I didn't have that problem. But I couldn't put sunscreen on top of my makeup. I only had it underneath. And I burned my nose, guys. Mm, mm -mm. That was the first time I'd ever done that. So right. everybody needs sunscreen. Make sure you pack it in your backpack. Yep. It is worthless in your toiletry bag. Indeed. Okay, so our final tip is dress in layers. We mentioned this earlier, but the weather was such a range. It was crazy. 30 degrees in the morning, so it was freezing. We needed full-blown coats. Mm -hmm. I had like a puffer vest or whatever, but I wore long sleeves, so honestly, I needed my puffer coat in the morning. And then by the time it was noon, it was 70 degrees and full blaring sun. So make sure you dress in layers because it will change during the day, almost every day, so. Absolutely. What's your next adventure? We're looking for places to go. See, See you in the, the next, next video. video.